And we're back. Episode three. Yeah. Doing big things, man. Still alive. St- yeah, well, yeah, still alive, still kicking, still still rocking it. I mean, it feels good, man. It does feel good, dude. It does feel good. It feels good. You guys are giving us some love. For real. For real. There's there's a movement behind this. And uh it, it it's a big one. I like this. It's getting there. You know? I, I definitely didn't expect uh this to go this quick. Um Closing in on a thousand subs right now. Yes. Closing in. Closing in. Uh, we got uh, like eight fifty right now, and that's that's huge, man. It is, and it that's means huge. that you guys are talking about us. Yeah. Um, we definitely expected at this point to be like flirting with a hundred, two hundred viewers, and slowly, you know, spreading it through social media, sharing. But I mean, people people are talking. People around the world. Yeah. I mean, how about? We got the um, we got that girl Emma who sent us in the sent us to the email the hard to kill pod p zero d at gmail dot com. Send your emails over there. We'll be reading a couple uh, listener emails today. But yeah, we got this this girl Emma who reached out and she does different kinds of artwork. So I don't know if you guys if you guys are looking at our social medias. It was we just posted that the the picture of the first one. Yeah, yeah. The first one is uh. It's a. I think it's a picture of your face, and then the the head. I thought it was me and you, and no, my head is thinking, and it's yeah. us. Yeah, like, that's exactly what it is. Ass. Exactly what it is. Badass. Yes. Some. That's, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. That is creative. That's, yeah. I don't have that ability. That so. mind, yeah. Like we we both think of ourselves as creatives, but it's hard to put what's up here out there. So she definitely, I think. Uh, she hit the nail on the head. She there. did it, man! Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. wow. And then she sent us a second one that we just looked at, and that was fire as yeah, well. It was. It was. Fire. So I kind of told her about the colors of the combat action ribbon. Kinda, yeah. Kind of like uh, blue, red, yellow. Goons up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that yeah. little emblem. Yeah. And shout out. First of all, shout out Goons yeah, up. Yeah, Goons up, dude. If you've never been to GoonsUp.com, check him out. Uh, those just, those dudes have some sweet designs. Once again, their ideas, dude, that they're able to put on paper, man, it's just. Yeah. Everything we think of as enlisted Marines. Right. Um, yeah. The, the, the badass guy. Yeah. Seriously. Good stuff. Goonsup.com. We're going to try to definitely get some uh, some of those, uh, the flags. For yeah. I, yeah. We got to like order that. a few of them at least. And check them out, guys. If, if you're any kind of uh, Marine ground pounder or. Or any service. Yeah, branch. absolutely. Check out his stuff. You know, police, fire, EMS. Yeah, he had all absolutely. that. It was, it was beautiful. Good for you, bro. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. Very nice design work. I'd be curious to do, to know who does. Yeah. That also, it, 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 whoever runs Goons Up, if you could reach out to us, man, I'd love to hear your story. Who you were, who were you with, and uh, maybe collab at some point. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's a. That's what this is about. That's, that's, that's kind of what's interesting about this, dude. You, got, you get to see the people that are kind of like you. Yeah. Because I think it helps that we're actually doing the pod. Right. But as, honestly, dude, as I said before, we started this because we did not see on youtube yet kind of what we're thinking well in in general we didn't see it we in general we there is no there's no common ground i i was talking to i was talking to somebody today about it and they, they they were they were like oh you should interview some vietnam guys and and i said yeah I, i'm i'm down to interview anybody keep in mind those old times man they don't they look at this talking as taboo yeah you know what i'm saying like it, it's it, this is a total different era we're talking here where Everything was handled in the tree line, and it didn't leave. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Wild, uh, wild experiences from all different wars, and I'm down to talk to to anyone there. Um, so th- that you know, don't think that we're just OIF. Please, OEF. if you know anyone with just a good, 
a good story. I mean, it, it, I don't want to say it has to be military. No. Just a just a good story about someone that's gone through some shit and triumphed or and made it. Yeah. yeah. Send it over. Send it to the email. Hard to kill pod. Talk to them. P zero D at gmail dot com. We want we we're we're trying to put together a, the way I see this going is I I want to try to interview like minded individuals, people that you know I don't we're in the military to some degree. I want to hear your stories. I I want you to show me how what we're talking about has sparked you a little bit. Right. Yeah. What what you've gained what you've gained out of this? Maybe Definitely. you've learned something new. But that's that's where we're gonna start. That's where it's coming in. Um, little little recap from the last episode. Uh, good vibes. Yeah. Good awesome stuff. Vibes. Good vibes. A lot of good so reviews. We, uh, so we officially figured out how to film this without an iPhone. Step in the game <laughs> up, and we got the mics working, kid. The mics. out. So check it. One two. Yep. One two. Check check. Yep. They work. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, you know, we we were just an iPhone on a tripod, and now we're we've well, we stepped up. We got a brand up. new tri, brand new tripod. Yeah. If you can't tell, you're a little elevated Pat's this week. Happy. Pat's happy. Pat, we happy or what? Pay pay in the background, feeling good. All right. Um, but yeah, the, the the episode dropped. We had a lot of good reviews. I went to the bar on Sunday. I, I ran into probably <laughs> shocker. <clears throat> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the meat raffle. He doesn't even say the bar anymore. Just, so I was at the belly. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it make it sounds better. It doesn't make me sound like such a booze bag. <laughs> but I was there, and I had uh, you know I had a lot of a lot of good reviews from different people. A lot of people that were tuning in. What are they talking about? Uh, how the, a lot of them were so how, word on the street. The word on the street is us exposing our vulnerabilities, and most civilians not <laughs> not hold on not knowing that any of that kind of stuff exists really yeah yeah i had i had that's does that stick out to them yeah because it's abnormal it's not every not everybody was actually said to you that's something that like i don't know that stood out yeah Yeah, oh yeah oh yeah thinking about that from our point of view is kind of well i'm i look at it in the aspect like most normal civilians haven't haven't you know they say that the the worst thing that's ever happened to you is the worst thing that's ever happened to you. So if the worst thing that's ever happened to you is you were in a car wreck and you broke your leg, you compare everything to that car wreck when you broke your leg. Like that. Worst thing that's ever happened to us is nightmares for, yeah, for anyone yeah, yeah. else. Is the so hard, the hard levels in Call of Duty. He, I, had, I had people that like, res- excuse me. Come on, dude. Res- sorry, drinking drinking beers. <laughs> Crushing beers. Beers, beers. So we had, uh, I had a guy who said that the vulnerability that we were able to show brought to his mind, oh shit, you really don't know who you're standing next to. You really don't know who that guy Absolutely. across the room is. That's big facts. Yeah. So the last weekend, I, I yeah, I went to the bar, like usual. <laughs> um, Sunday, Sunday's a big bar day. I'm a, I'm a Sunday fun day guy. <clears throat> I like to start early, end early. No, to me, if you're if you're an early guy like that, I figure you'd love brunch, dude. I never see you be really brunching it. I try to skip all food on Sunday and go straight booze. Oh, that's a fucking stud right there. Well, that's how you lay it down by seven thirty. There's a tradition in my house. You Talk know, about it. We don't. I don't have kids, so um, when we uh, when we have Sunday Sunday fun day, we go out. Me and the wife will take the old hot rod out. Yeah, I see that. And uh, you know, a couple two tree. Sometimes I let her drive, <laughs> and. Uh, we call in Chinese on the ride home. Jake on the ride home. On the ride home. So if I don't win the meat raffle, we get in Chinese. Ew. Love Chinese food. What's your go-to Chank order? D19. He's got the D19. <laughs> is that the small poo-poo? No, 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 no. D19 is a general sows, uh, pork fried rice, crab rangoons, and boneless spare ribs. Ooh. And we get an order of spring rolls. I love, have, I love spring rolls. Dude. What about, I thought you were a goon guy. I am a goon guy. You know what I'm not though? I'm not an egg roll guy. I'm a Me either. I There's am a spring going roll guy. Not an egg roll guy. Not an egg roll guy. <laughs> too heavy, dude. Too heavy. I'm not about sure. them carbs. Like I said, booze and take. No one likes to stay, up stay focused, you know? Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Oh. So I went to the beach Sunday. Instead of going to the bar and going to get Chinese food like my normal Sunday tradition, we, me, and, uh, me and the wife ventured down to the beautiful state of Rhode Island. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful state of Rhode Island. The ocean state, if you will. The ocean state. So we ventured down there. We hung out at the beach for uh, probably four or five hours. 
I spent about 15 minutes in the sun, the rest under my umbrella, because I am a fair-skinned individual. uh, individual. Thank you. Uh, Otherwise, I'd be roasted. Gotcha. So I did that. Uh, We came back. We had... uh, Oh, I cooked um, burgers for supper. Okay. Wrapped it up, went to bed. So Mike's actually a big sauce guy. Condiments. 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 Subtle about it, but this man right here has some combinations that are just next level. With 4th of July being this Ooh, weekend. 4th of July. With four, he's th- over that. Well, no, 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 no. With 4th of July being this weekend, this is where I shine. Like that X, dude. Dude. When I slap a double bacon burger on your paper plate as you're coming through the line, you're going to want that Arbo special sauce no that I whipped up in the kitchen. A little ketchup, mayo, relish, and hot sauce. Dude, don't Boom. give it away, dude. Well, that's just one. You have the hot sauce with that. Y- yeah, I'm not giving you the ratios either. <laughs> but you mix that shit up, throw it in a squirt bottle. Forget about it. People's jaws dropping. So we got to, as we said, we have people interested. We got to call our fans something so off the cuff i went with hard to kill mafia i like it i also like the mafia <sighs> That's facts. Oh, anyways some... i think it has a ring to it mm-hmm. um if you guys feel different holla at me but i'm pretty sure we're going with it i like it so yeah. hard to kill mafia how do you hope yeah okay love, the, love in the comments um please whatever you think that we're lacking on or we can do better this is we're here for you once again yeah so, help yeah. us help us and follow the Instagram. That's the Instagram is how you could like get in touch with us daily. Yes. We post to it daily. Um, we respond to people daily. Trying to build it. Yeah, that's that's the that's the build it. That's the easiest way to get in touch with us, other than the email. But definitely follow the Hard to Kill podcast on the Instagram. That's that's huge. Please. You know, we've got almost nine hundred subscribers, and our followers Three on the on the gram are like fifty. It's let's let's mix it in. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Something else I wanted to bring up when we're just, you know, in intro phase still. We're thinking about merch. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, I talked about it a little bit in the last podcast with the sticker program there. Um, They're still being designed. Keep in mind, we have full-time jobs, so this is something we do on the side. But We still want something that, you know, you want to throw on your vehicle or uh, you want to wear. Oh, dude. I talked to uh, Steve Smith from Porta Tree Racing. Yeah, random, random subject, but I met, I talked to him last night and he was again asking about the podcast. So Steve Smith works or he, his father owns Porta Tree Racing. They build uh, on drag race strips, you know, those little lights, it's like yeah. red, yellow, yellow, yeah. yellow, green. That's it? He builds those. Oh, cool. And he ships them all around the world. How he just plugged it with him. He's a friend of mine. Oh, okay. He's, he, uh, shout out Steve Smith. Shout out Steve Smith. Yeah, Porta Tree Racing. Um, but Steve Smith. Uh, drag races That's and he owns a drag car and he told me he's gonna put our logo on his drag Ooh. car so i talked to him last logo. night we'll yeah we're we'll working on the logo yes but steve drags uh what is it um something stock super stock he, he's got a like a 2016 challenger with a blower sticking to the hood not something you drive on the street gotcha but uh, good friend, good friend of the podcast. He's gonna throw the logo on the car, so we'll have to we'll have to shoot some footage of us going along. Oh, to absolutely! To check out one of those races. Absolutely. The logo with the flag on it, fucking mint. Yeah. yeah. So back to merch, though. So, uh, we are gonna have some merch coming out. The stickers are being produced. Once we have the logo, that's huge. Now we're in the summer already, so are we, we go with the tea. Yeah, we're gonna have to start. You know, basic tea. We're gonna have an original. You gotta have an OG design, so Definitely. that that'll be the start. And again, any proceeds that are made from merch and stuff yeah. is what's that's how we're gonna get to our other here. our other brothers that want to talk. Yep, that's gonna pay going for their right plane tickets. The that's gonna pay for their hotel if they're coming out here yeah. to talk. Uh, it's gonna make that's us gonna help ultimately. us our production. That, that's everything. You know, yeah. it's I said in the first episode, man, it's crawl, walk, run, but we crawling. I definitely want to take a. Fuck it, dude. Take a percentage of that and throw throw it to you know some kind of disabled veteran charity. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we'll get that. You know, that's that's huge. We got that girl who's who's making up. She's done a couple of them for us. Uh, Emma, who's done those those yep. paintings. Yep. So she hopefully has. Yeah, uh, hopefully by the end of next week, we got something for you. Yeah, yeah. Because we're ready to stickers are ready to print. Yeah. We just need the logo. I can't believe we're talking about this. Yeah, I know. 
I've always been that dude. Like I got like my four or five podcasts that I watch, and I'm I'm always seeing them come out with their merch or this and that. Like, dude, like some good ideas, man. I feel like I could do that. You know, like huh. they're starting at the bottom, building it. That's exciting, dude. Yeah, it's an opportunity, dude. It's I I I like it. I I think one. I think it's great. It's great that we're getting the word out there. Two. I think it's great that we let the vets talk. And, and three. I think it's great for me and you personally it's, not only it, is it to, therapy to, yeah well that's what i'm saying to get it out mentally you know how it's such of a good feeling it is that because after each after each episode literally me and mike dab up and say dude i feel great yeah uh yeah talking. big vibes yeah yeah but uh yeah I'm, I'm happy that this can help others too I, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me saying that i'm hitting the nail on the head i mean everything i'm saying is exactly how i'm feeling i'm not flexing right now i just it makes me feel good yeah that, it makes because you- we were we the main thing we wanted to do is we wanted to associate with these people. Right. We wanted them to reach out to us somehow to let us know we're not nuts. We're talking about stuff that's, that's happening out there guys. That's yeah. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. Real and raw, you know, I, and the mer- the merch will come. That's cool. You know, we're, we got this, the foot in the right direction. Definitely. That must be the most proud feeling to have like a podcast or something and see someone like out there rocking you, rocking your shit. Well, I remember when I had my construction company. I was, oh, absolutely. Best hoodies around, dude. I all yeah. Up here, hoodies a big staple. Yeah, in in you live in New England, man. It gets cold in the winter. It's, you, got, you got your go to hoodie. You gotta have a hoodie, man. You gotta have a hoodie. And I always I always made dope hoodies yeah, for the did. company. Yeah, you did that first black one was dude. That the company I bought those original ones from. They don't make them anymore. Really? Yeah. Because I would have bought OG more. Right there, yeah. yeah. Hard to find, dude. So Mike had a small construction company and mostly dabbled in solar um yeah. when we got out of the marine corps solar was huge yeah solar was massive that's so i got out um i got out and i worked private sector uh construction for a little bit then i went to the union then i left the union and went out on my own and uh, it was right when the solar boom had happened very nice a lot of money oh yeah it was it was great good checks yeah it was great while it lasted yeah, yeah well it lasted yeah. we have like a five six year run about that yeah. yeah five and a half yeah so the it was it was great because the state of massachusetts offered such a huge rebate on panels yep. that people were essentially getting this shit installed for, yeah. for pennies everyone was doing it too right construction crews were literally like transferring yeah, we, yeah. Would like oh they'd be know we did so they'd be framing a garage <laughs> yeah. one day and hanging panels the next it was it was crazy wow wow west back we were making then. money people were making money yeah. it was good yeah it was it was good it was good well that's so the you know the market dried up when they cut all the rebates but I had a fucking blast. Yes, yes we did. <laughs> I had a good time, man. And uh, it, it, it shows you, you, you know, you, when you, when I got out, <clears throat> part of me thinks now that like when I get out, cause I, you know, you know, I hired all my boys when I opened my company. And we worked for you, didn't we? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. But I, I almost start to think about it now. Like I was trying to replace that family that I had. In the Marines. Yeah. That's big, dude. With guys on my crew. So something that isn't really widely known, when when you're in the Marines, you, you're so close-knit with, like, your, you select 10, 10 to 20 guys. Yeah. And when you get out, you, it's, you don't really realize what's happening, but you're never going to see these guys again, most of them. Mm. You know? I mean, you, you get your ones and twos. Yeah. And, Funerals and reunions. Yeah. I don't want it's unfortunate, but that's just to my guys. I don't want to keep talking about a reunion, dude. I want to just make that a staple, man. Let's let's we kind of start. We're getting we're getting too old now. Let's start getting together. It needs to happen at least once a year, guys. Let's do it. Yeah, we're all capable. Yeah. And hopefully, we're we're starting something right now where that can happen more. I, I know that's kind of like corny to say or anything like that, but these guys mean a lot to us, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, they had a third CEB had a reunion, and none of the guys from my platoon. I don't think any of them went. I mean, we got lives, dude. It's it's tough. We got lives, and all you know, the, they, it, it was a unit reunion. It wasn't like a platoon gotcha, reunion. Gotcha. You know what I mean? A platoon reunion, you'd you'd like to see everybody there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, Usually, me and that's Mike, your group. That's your your yeah. your your bad uh, birds. It's, it's either you or it's me. We have one of our marine buddies over. And we, we oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? It just need, it needs to happen more. No, I'd love to have it happen more. It's tough to find time, dude. The, the yeah. older we get, 
the harder it is to find time with families. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't have kids right now, but I'm married. I got a house. So you, you know, there's, there's, I got a job. Yeah. You know, got a podcast. Got a podcast. <laughs> so. It's good. So something I, I talked with Mike with, um, I want to start doing at least, I don't know, probably once a podcast. Every other. Pat, throw me one. Tell a good combat story. Yeah. Got it. So we're both going to go. You want to flip a coin to see who goes first? No, shoot yours first. Oh, I wanna... All right, fine. So I'm going to talk about a, uh, a leader that I had a different level of respect for over okay. there. Um, Wow, I didn't know. I didn't know uh, my my comments were that explosive. Thanks, Pat. Shake it up, baby. So, <laughs> so I, I oh, when I was overseas, we had a uh, we were engineers that were att- oh mine too, huh, Pat? <laughs> really, Pat, dude. So Pat's like our Jamie. Yeah. You watch Joe Rogan, The Godfather, or The Podfather. Pat's Pat's the man behind the scenes. Yeah. AKA Pepe. So. Pat's- yeah. So we, uh, I'm overseas. We're engineers. We get attached to grunt units. So they'll break us up in pairs and it'll be, you know, all 0311s or all 03s and then us attached to them along with like a calm guy attached or you know a corpsman. I never thought of whenever I've seen EOD, it's always been in ones and twos. So you don't really get to stick together with your guys a lot. You get attached. Well, we're a small operation. You know, we're, we're essentially, engineers are essentially a, like a, it's a specialty. Whenever, yeah. So whenever we called for EOD, it was always like one to two operators. Then they'd have a couple grunts with them and a gunner, and they like usually roll in mounted convoys. Yeah, well, EOD is different than engineers. Um, engineers are attached in the in the infantry units. EOD is a, a separate element that you call if you found something and the guy can't take care of it. Whoever's on the floor, <sighs> dude. Whenever you see some wonky shit on the side of the road over there, you call EOD. Yeah, and to, if you want to wait fucking 10 hours. Dude, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> He's not lying. Every time, like, the stipulation that. behind EOD, dude, is like, you got to wait for these motherfuckers. Dude. Stand behind the wall and shoot oh it. Oh, my God. You're better off. Dude. For real, stand behind the wall and shoot it. Who's the best shot here? Come here, PFC. Fucking dude, let you it must, rip. Dude, I've, we saw some raw shit that they hooked up bombs with, dude. Yeah. Lots Mortar of Mortar shell, old 155 shells, like. The way they would make their stuff, I mean, you got to tip their hats off to them, dude. They're, you know what reminds you of? Just one of those dudes that can just pop a hood and fucking fix anything. Like Eddie? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's who's making bombs over there, dude. This <laughs> fucking really? guy that's good at working on cars, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. We Some got, of those configurations, I'd look at it, I'd just be like, that's Eddie Parker. Yeah, we got this <laughs> We got this childhood friend, Eddie Parker, who's a he's a, a local farmer. Yeah. But this, yeah. He could he could fix whatever you had. Broken. He can make it for you. Yeah, yeah. If you need one you, of those, you need if you need that fixed, he'll fix it. He's that kind <laughs> of guy. He's got every tool in the book. Love you, Eddie. But uh, yeah, so uh, leadership wise, this dude, uh, Sergeant Will Stacy, he was uh, a grunt sergeant who was the squad leader of one of the squads that I was attached to. With um, it was, I, don't, I forget if it was. Castro Kovalon, one of my junior guys, I was attached with this dude, and this dude was the ch- like a lot of the grunt sergeants were hard ons. They they hate engine. They they hate anybody who's not a grunt. Of course, you know, because I have a one and a one three instead of a zero dude, three. I'm a fuck. You know, <laughs> I've had whatever arguments with that. Shit. Yeah, I have too, man. I, I don't I don't put up with any of that <laughs> nonsense. But anyways, they, they this dude was chill. He was mad chill. Um, you know, he never busted our balls on stuff. You could joke with him. He was like, it was like me talking so to you. Common sense. Yeah, it. You know, it wasn't. There was no rank. To, Rare. He was a sergeant. I was a corporal. But there was no. I didn't feel any difference. Yeah. We, we were on the same page. We were there to so do our job and get like, back. Yeah. Um, so I clicked with this guy, and you know, I got along with him. We operated well together as a, you know, me as an engineer, him as a squad leader of the grunts. So, you know, he knew my operation. I knew what those guys were doing. We clicked very well. We operated together for, for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. Um, then me and the other engineer were pulled out, and we went to Nalzad. Uh, yeah. yeah, Nalzad in uh, Helmand Province, Afghanistan. And then we went from there to Musa Kela. Yep. 
in Helmand Province as well. And when we got to Musakela, we got out of the uh, MRAP, and I walk up you to the... You guys were running mostly MRAPs, and he met these? You know the little... Yeah, they had them both. You um, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that Matt V rips. Right? You ever drive one? Oh my god, dude. It's fucking awesome. Dude, I got... Imagine having one of those, dude. <laughs> no! You ever look... Google that. Yeah, look up a Matt V. Matt V. The most badass vehicle <sighs> there is. <laughs> Big diesel. Got some balls to it, oh, dude. Man. It's got a big ass machine gun up oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So we yeah, we took we got it we caught a lift there um to Musakela. And it was just engineers. I think there was only five of us. Maybe six. How many of trucks? Us. To bring us there? Yeah. Ten truck, five truck? No, 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 no. Less than that. Maybe. Oh, you're running small. So yeah, okay. maybe maybe three or four. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the minimum out there. You want to yeah. have at least Real usually small four. Units. At least four, but if you got three, dude, you get in there quick and you leave quick. Yeah, and the and the fucking the convoy operator is probably a sergeant. Yeah, and, and he's looking <laughs> Just to get quick down the road. He's look, get mail. He's looking to get his cigarettes at the base. Yeah, so exactly. fucking hurry up. Definitely, that's all it is. Yeah, but the, um, this dude, Stacy, he, he yeah, he was just an all around good dude, and he was the first like other grunt NCO that I that I had talked to that that didn't have like this. I'm the fucking grunt. She kind of. Uh, mentality when Plus, it's know, like those dudes. i don't care that you're the grunt dude i'm the, i walk in the front with the detector so shut up and cover my six <laughs> yeah do your job for real dude like i'm not here to argue with you i'm here to fucking step yeah. save you from stepping on a bomb so let's be friends and this dude i didn't have to have that with like he just he was a decent guy yeah, common sense so we we take the, the convoy back to musakela from nalzad to musakela we get out and it's an old like uh like like town hall that we had, that the U.S. had taken over, or okay. that the Marines had taken over yeah. with Hesco barriers and shit, and that's what they operated out of down there. We were just going to resupply. I needed C4. I needed I needed blasting caps. I needed deck cord. I needed gotcha. all the shit from next missions to take back up to Nelza. So we go down there, and we're hanging out in the little smoke pit area outside of where our 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 gunny and our staff sergeant stay, oh. and uh, I, I remember standing. I was standing next to to Will Colvalone, junior Marine of mine, and Staff Sergeant Hasso stepped out of the door and said, you guys ever work with a Sergeant Stacy? And I was like, yeah. And we were both like, yeah, yeah, actually he's a pretty cool dude. Hopefully we get, you know, paired up with them again when we go back. And then Staff Sergeant Hasso said he was killed. Oh, fuck. And that is the worst fucking feeling, dude. It was like I two days ago, we were just covering each other to move through the buildings, and 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 I just found somebody that I kind of got along with, and oh, that's the worst kick in the nuts. Dude. It wasn't like a childhood friend. It wasn't a long term friend, but it, as far as like general clear headed leadership, which is it was so the, rare. It was the it was a prime example is what he brought to the table, and that. That was the first time when I was there that we had lost somebody. I mean, it was we were only there for a few weeks, but um, that is that one hurt. Kick in the nuts, you know that that was that was a that was a I'm tough sorry, one to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was twenty three years old Ugh. from from Northern California, and uh, when I went to that boots on the ground memorial for Memorial Day, I found his tag. And I couldn't go any further because I, I collapsed. I saw his tag, and it was emotional. Dude, I, you're I a cried. Man, man. For even going to that, dude, I haven't even been able to go to one of those, dude. But you know what his tag was? You know, you go down, and you look at all the tags, and it's always a boot camp photo. It's the you put that fucking fake jacket on that only goes to here, and you put the hat on. You stand there, and it's usually that photo. At. <laughs> Stacy's wasn't that photo. It was a photo of him like fucking around. Really? Yeah, like it. It was in you know, it was a photo of him overseas, but it was. He had a mustache. He had that field stash going, dude. And I it looked at it. was a good photo. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a photo that, like, that's what I would want. If, you know, I, won't, I don't want my boot camp photo. But that, was, that was just an element of leadership that he provided, that he was about the whole team. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to flex on anybody. He was about getting everybody home. He was about getting the mission done. And he was about morale. And, you know, he was a great sergeant. R.I.P. Yeah, rest in peace. To a real one. Will Stacy. Yes. So something that you need to talk about is when you find 
someone over there that's close to you like that that you can, you know, mesh with, if you will, and they just get ripped out from under you and something like that. It's not only are you already in kind of a negative mindset over there because you don't know if you're going to get to the next day, to be honest. But when someone like that, it's just this extra weight that gets put on you that <clears throat> it's no good. No. No. It, it's uh, And it was just so, like, the dude could bang, you know? Duke, he, he, he could ones, fight. That's... You know, he, could, he, knew, he knew how to operate. He knew how to move. He knew to let the guys sweep and not to, you know, he knew where to step. He knew how to advise his guys to cover us. So, he was everything you wanted as a grunt sergeant if you were going to be attached there. The salty motherfucker. And just chill, man. Like, never give you a hard time about shit. Leave it on truth. Slow your tone. So I told my combat. Oh, <laughs> stop, dude. That song is awful. It's not, dude, pop smoke, welcome to the party. Come on. God, Combats, God. Oh, dude, wow. give pop some love, dude. Come on. Welcome to the party. Leave it on truth. <laughs> Slow your tone. No. Anyways. Don't Mike, sing. Mike told his combat story. One of them. One of them. And I'll pull something out of the bag for you. Before before you tell you that story, you called like three guys out there when we were we, we <laughs> just took we just took a little we we took a little break and he called like three different dudes out there and was like, Hey, uh, I'm about to tell a story. Which one should I tell? <laughs> And all three of them were like, call someone else. <laughs> like, dude, like, don't tell that don't, story, Don't dude. tell my story. <laughs> I got it's kids. Not, yeah, not, not, not because it was anything bad. It's just clown. Like, Kari, it, cut it out, man. It's, uh, it, I don't know. Y'all are sweating, dude. It's, it's, it's good. Sean. To, it, yeah, Sean, Sean's scared. Yeah, dude, Sean's scared. Philly, Philly. Philly. Jesus Christ. Fly Eagle, my ass. Yeah. Are so good. Yeah, bullshit. Our cheesesteaks are awesome. Are you Mike or Pat's? What What are the two places? Pat's and dude, guys like that have the little mom and pop stores that they like. They don't consider the, the mainstream fucking cheesesteak places. Have you ever had a cheesesteak from oh, Philly? Yeah, they're that good. You ever been to Philly? Yeah, I went down to see him. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah I I've never been to Philly. Uh but I I love me a cheesesteak. Dude, honestly, props to Philly, dude. I don't know what it is, if it's the water down there or what it is, but they're just better. They are just better. The, what? The, it starts the grade the, of people? The, the cheesesteaks. Oh, 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 oh. Definitely not the people. Well, no, dude. Here. Water and bread. Sure. Jamie. Pat. Hey, Pat. Anyways, so they actually introduced me to something called the pizza cheesesteak. Oh, yeah. I think we call that a calzone. Bro. Cheesesteak with a pizza in it with a little hot sauce is revelational. I'm all about that hot sauce. Whoa. Dude. All about that hot sauce. Anyways, cheesesteaks are yeah. better. Yeah. Cheesesteaks are, cheese are good. Sean is bad. Let's hear, his, <laughs> <laughs> let's hear your story, dude. What do you got today? All right. So mine is going to kind of tie into leadership in combat as well. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, something that really strikes home for me is leadership in combat. Um, you can be a bad leader or a good leader. It's as simple as that. And it really comes out in kind of what you were saying about your guy earlier, just being a human being, having common sense, talking to your guys mm -hmm. like they're on being the relatable, being relatable, making sure you got your guys see you suffering, doing the same shit that they're doing. If they don't see that, it's going to create animosity, and it's just not a good look for you. But if we see you in the trenches struggling with us, going through the same shit that we're going through, you get a, a certain type of respect. You're one of us. Right. You're sharing the load. That's the leader. That's, that's who I trust with my life, and that's who I want to lead me in combat. Right. That's who I'm going to base my leadership off of. Anyways, those people are few and far between. <clears throat> for Mikey had a sergeant. Sorry. Um... Stacy, Will Stacy. Sergeant Will Stacy. For us, we had a Captain Donner stag. <clears throat> so Officer. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, dude. Get out of here. Banging it out with us, dude. One of those dudes that goes the extra mile just to be like, you didn't do that. Match me. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Oh, yeah. So enlisted at a hot. Gotcha. So 
young dude out of Jersey, straight off the fucking Italian, uh, the Italian side, the Jersey Shore type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like Sean. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sean. Let's leave Sean out of this. You're going to get me fired up. Sorry. Anyway, so uh, Donner Stag right away uh, showed his caliber, uh, puts himself out first with everything, um, and just leads the way. Captain? And, yep. And something he just excelled at was leading us in mounted convoys. And over there, it's an art. Because you have so many things you have to calculate and think of over there. You need to know where the enemy is at at all times. You need to know how to read a BFT. You need to be in control of your guys. You have a huge responsibility. You're the convoy commander. You have to know everyone's position and what they're doing at all times and keep a level of communication between everyone so we know we're all jiving. We're all on the same page. We're all live wire. We're all ready to go. And that takes a certain type of individual. And Captain Donner Stag embodied it. Um, it's something he just excelled at. And as you know, it, it kind of goes right into your field is finding IEDs. Over there, that was the game changer for them. They didn't have the equipment. They didn't have the uh, vehicles. They didn't have the weapons. They didn't have the intelligence. They had nothing, but they had IEDs. They knew the terrain and they had IEDs. And that's what they were being most effective with. And not only that, they had really what they had is we were working with the A and A and AHP, and they were feeding them information. But regardless, they knew our moves, they knew what we were doing, they knew they had our an missions. insight. So having that intelligence as a somewhat comp- <clears throat> competent enemy that had just fought the Russians, they can be effective. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they were, and something that he excelled at, <clears throat> that the unit before us was getting killed with, was IEDs. The Taliban in our area was very, very efficient with them. They adapted to our SOPs, which means they saw what we were doing for IED defeat and being cool. cautious with IEDs, and they mimicked it, and they went against it. For example, when we went in and out, followed our tracks in and out, that's something we were trained at a very early stage. Step just because we know it's, it's safe, we already ran over it with the mine roller, we know there's nothing there. Right. They started backlaying us, so they would follow us out there. Wait till we got a certain distance away so we couldn't see and lay a fucking 155 shell in our track so they knew we were coming back in the same way. Mm-hmm. What, what I'm saying is they adapted to our every movement. So being able to be efficient at locating, locating IDs with plain, plain eyesight is just another level of talent, especially when you're in a moving vehicle. If you, Something you don't understand is, especially shooting, something from a moving vehicle is different. Engaging the enemy is different. Locating bombs is different. You have to calculate how fast you're going, um, how far the target is away. A lot more things come into the picture. And for him, and keep in mind, I'm always Vic One Gunner. I'm always with him in the gun on the 50 cal in the first truck, lean the fucking pack. And for us, we got to find the bombs. So if, if need be, we hit it, and the rest of the guys are good. With a scout vehicle. So regardless... My job as the gunner is to be 100% attentive on the road for that. Not only am I looking for enemies, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking on the road. I'm looking. So the main things that we were taught to look for for IED defeat is new things, rock formations. Um, Sand markings. Uh, Same markings. Uh, Hesk, uh, things just out of place. Something that would happen Trash. before firefights or just dangerous things over there is the area would clear out. It would be silent. It would give you goosebumps on the back of your neck because, dude, it wasn't this fucking dead and quiet fucking 15 minutes ago. All of a sudden, you can what hear the yourself fuck breathe. What's going on, dude? I'm, it, like, shit's, you know it's about to go shit's, down. It's like a static. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, fuck yeah, I do. It, I, get, I a, get chills thinking about it. It's an unsettling feeling. You know you're being Oof. watched, you know you're being cased, and you know they were plotting against you. I don't know what it is, but there's something in us as human beings that can sense that shit. So I'm just trying to set the stage of what my company was used to dealing with. Uh, my group of guys, it was about 20 of us. Supreme leadership. And not only does it set the example for us, but it keeps us all in line, keeps us level-headed. We know who's leading us is competent, uh, ferocious, and just with enough common sense or intelligence to lead a group of guys and be effective in Afghanistan. About six months into the deployment, he took a hard hit from an IED and he became a combat ineffective and he had to go home. It was 
just like you said, when you lost your sergeant, a significant hit to the guys that I was over there with. Um, I'm that's, not trying to tell that story. So regardless, <clears throat> um, after he left, they had trouble replacing him, as obvious they would, because there's not another one like him, with incompetent leaders and people that have never led Marines before, guys right out of OCS type deal, or just with a simple mindset. <clears throat> and we, basically what we were tasked to do throughout the days was go check up on, on two separate highways, the patrol bases that we had set up throughout our deployment. So we had two highways, Route 1 and Route 606. Dangerous motherfuckers loaded with IEDs, loaded with Taliban, not pleasant places. Regardless, we're down Route 606, checking up on one of our patrol bases. And keep in mind, between these, between these patrol bases is mud huts, small town. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. Keep in mind, there's not... A lot of paved roads over there, so the paved roads nah, really, All concrete. really get attention over there. So, between these patrol bases were the the spots where you would get most action. You would get most people trying to ambush you, most IDs going off because you know you were kind of further away from reinforcements, so they had a time window. So, on a convoy one day, we began to get mortared between between patrol bases. And the person that was in charge, I'm not going to name drop, so we're not here for that, but I'm just trying to make a, a example of leadership. As Good leadership and bad yeah. leadership. <clears throat> so keep in mind, we had a new uh, convoy commander, and he hadn't been in a lot of combat situations. And awesome, you haven't been in a lot of combat situations. Talk to your guys. Right. You're not know alone. Know who your salty guys are. Know yeah. who's really running the enlisted guys. Talk to them. Humble yourself in front of them. Let them tell you what's going on. The guy didn't do that. He tried to take everything over on his own. He couldn't handle it, and, he, and clearly he was starting to fumble. That's... Unfortunately, that's... over there, an ignorant leader is not aware. They do not know they're being an ignorant leader. So when they start being called out on, they start with that petty Marine Corps. You don't question an officer. Your uniform's out of rags. You haven't shaved in a week. Like, that type of shit. Which, and, when you're in a com, not to cut you off, but when no. you're in a when you're in a combat zone, tell, tell that. Yes, when you're in a combat that zone, that shouldn't dude, apply. Yeah, when your when your boy got smoked yesterday, I don't give a fuck how long my mustache. Let's is. focus on what's in front of us, and we'll deal with that at another time. <laughs> Anyways, so we began to get mortared, and the person that was in charge of our convoy. Wanted us to halt and find who was shooting at us. Hold on. You got, he wanted you to halt while you were being mortared. Keep in mind, we have four vehicles going at least 40 miles an hour. We have a high-value individual with us. I think it was like some general or something we were bringing between fobs. You do not halt and wait to get shelled in any situation, especially when you really don't know the area. No. It's not your domain. You're far away from reinforcements. It's all bad. And realistically, basically, the guys had to take over and just not listen to them. Yeah. And just push. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And that's just kind of a quick example of, of poor leadership. I mean, yeah. Really know what I'm trying to tell you behind. Well, thank it, God he had you guys. He had this them them salt dogs that were there. I can't imagine too, what's going to happen without that. I'm well, sure there's a lot dude, of situations like that. Exactly. Too. So without somebody like you or somebody another NCO or another junior marine stepping up saying, "Hey, we're sitting fucking ducks here. Yeah. Make some invasive maneuvers and get us out, or just get out of the kill zone." Period. Yeah, it's always get out of the kill zone. We're not right? trying to be G.I. Joe out here. No. You know what I mean? No, this no. Isn't a, to, this isn't a Hollywood movie. You're trying to survive. You're trying to survive, man. Period. That's first. Yeah, survival is number one. When, you, when, you, when you're as a human being, when you are, are, are brought back to the, the basic instinct of survival, you really establish the rest of your life. When you're when you're looking at something like this is going to be the end, 
and you made it, and you did it over and over again, it gives you a different outlook, man. You know what someone told me that like I work with? I'm th- before we end that. I am thankful that you were there, and that, that, that you know the Appreciate other that. the other fucking Marines are there that that knew how to handle this shit, dude. Because you hear about a lot that of knew how to do it. That those guys aren't there, and they just have to deal with the bad leadership. And and they get yeah, those some of those dudes get smoked. Doesn't man. end well. No. It's- so something something someone I keep my me and Mike are both in construction. I kind of keep in mind this is new to us. We talk about it a little bit. So I was talking about this podcast to a guy that I work with, and I'm kind of a negative indiv- individual usually. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's just me. But regardless, I, I I guess I was just bitching a little bit about my life right now. And he, he was like, yo, dude, slow up. He's like, you tell me the story about, you know, taking a round to the head, getting in these firefights. Like, dude, you fucking made it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about that. Like I you, think about that all you the time. You made it out yeah. of those motherfucking situations, guy. You shouldn't be here right now. It's humbling. Dude, you're here for a reason. I think about that every day when you I get You gotta think now. of it like that, dude. That's how I think of life, man. Because we minimalize these things. You know, you don't really think about first view, first player. Like, yeah. dude, I actually did this. I actually went through this. Like, dude, look, I'm still here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's well, unless you unless you have somebody like like I have you, you have me, we have anybody else that wants it. Um, unless you have somebody to talk to that's been through those situations, bro, you can't relate. You can't. Like I, I would never speak on fucking pregnancy. I can't relate, dude. I don't want to hear somebody who's never been there speak on how my fucking brain operates. That's what when I was I talking get about back. the VA, dude. Yes. That just makes sense, man. I want to talk to someone that has been where I've been, has seen what I've seen, because they understand it. I'm a lot more comfortable. I want to tell you what actually happened. I, I trust your opinion, more importantly. Yeah. And, you, and you're not afraid to say anything. That's the biggest thing, dude. You can't be afraid. Like, if, if, you know, if I'm going to sit down with somebody and I'm afraid to talk to you about certain subjects, then th- th- you're not going to get the full thing. I'm going to hold stuff back. I'm not, I'm going to be, I'm going to be concerned that I'm going to be judged on what I tell you, which is, you know, it's that, that's a vulnerability that we're trying to get out now. And it's not easy. No, it's like, I see some of you judging us in the comments and, and keep in mind, yo, this is our like most vulnerable thing. Something that we have buried deep down and tried to be men about. Try to be this tough guy. Nothing bothers me. That was, yeah. You know, that was a part of my life, but that part's over. No, dude. It's not, it's really not over, man. And I'm not, I'm not trying to cry on someone's shoulder, but I'm really just trying to show you guys that you're not alone, man. Yeah. We get it. We've been through it. Let's put it out there. Let's crack a beer. Let's you know? let's let's crack a beer. Let's tell a story, man. You know, it's it's, it's me, you, and Pepe's in the background. Dude. It's it's crazy. Like just stories does, like this make you emotional, dude. Because we, dude, we do it. We're not used to being emotional. Yeah, we're uncomfortable. Well, expressing expressing emotions in general is tough for me. Like my wife gives me a, a hard time a lot about well, not a lot, but my wife will give me a hard time saying you, you know you have no emotions. You don't show a lot of emotion. Too many times. Right? And uh, it's it's like because the only emotion I have left is pain, and I it's not the one that I want to bring out in in, in situations like that. No, so when you don't, you put this wall up of I'm fine, everything's fine, we're good here. It's no good. It's another side effect. It keeps getting uh, bigger and bigger. Yeah, it never goes away. I want to try to I, I keep in mind we're just figuring out the flow of this podcast, but I want to try to talk about PTSD more. I don't think it's openly talked about because, dude, it frankly scares the shit out of me. Um, I didn't know when I first got on the Marine Corps. I like I didn't know really what PTSD was because it was brand new. That just had started getting talked about. And honestly, when you're fresh out of the Marines, dude, you're so fucking tight, wound up, dude. You don't know what's cool to talk about, what's not cool to talk about. Like 
you don't want to put anything extra out there because you know what in the Marines it just gets you fucked. Yeah, my dad my dad is uh that's what he used to call me all the time, wound up. He would he I mean we'll we'll get hit. my father will be a guest at some point. We'll yeah, talk to good. him. And that'll be a whole episode on what it's like to be a parent and send your kid to war. That is definitely something that should be addressed. You know, that, we don't think about how much we're scaring the fuck out of them. Yeah. Think about it. Dude. I think about it right now. If it was my son, dude, that would scare the shit out of me. I have to put trust in someone else to handle my kid, dude. And I know what the world's like. And he's not going to, he's not going to camp. <laughs> you know, as we just said, good and bad leadership, dude, that, that's all over the place. Yeah. If you're a competent father, dude, you're not going to let your son 10 feet away from you, never mind go to the Marine Corps. Yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> so, combat stories. We're going to keep trying to do that. Yeah, I would like to have that be a regular segment on the show. I think it humbles us a little bit, gets us kind of in our little bag talking about the real shit. Well, that and, and, and it, it, it feels good for me to say it out loud. And not just think of that moment in my head repetitively. Yeah, I know what you, mean. you know what I mean? To to not like I I think of that. I think of standing next to Kovalo when they when Hasso came out the door and was like, "Stacy's dead." And, um, I, that plays in my head. They're but, burned in your head. But when I'm standing in my kitchen with my wife and we're cooking dinner and I'm prepping the the stuff to go on the grill and I'm silent over there. She doesn't know what I'm thinking, she and can't. I, and I don't and I don't, I don't you know I don't say anything. Sometimes she'll say, "Oh, what, you all right? What's going on?" And like, yeah, I'm fine. I just snap out of it. But you don't realize, like, I I, well, I realize now that I slip into that flashback kind of trance every now and again. Yeah, yeah, no, I do too. <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy you just said that. It it does, dude. It. You That's catch it super self conscious, dude. Like, you ever just catch yourself just like checked out completely, locked into a thought? People look at you strange. Yeah, it's scary because I don't. You can see that you're thinking about some vivid shit, and it takes a second to snap out of yeah, it. it does. And uh, but that's that's real. Like that, you know, replaying, replaying it. I mean, Stacy's only one one thing. You know, replaying those images. And it comes in waves, man. Some you know, some days are, are better than others. But are you guys reaching out to you? Yeah, I, I I've talked to a handful. You know, guys, uh, I haven't talked to in a while too, dude. Dude, my my buddy from North Hello, Martin, my buddy from North Carolina, Christopher, gave me a call on uh, Tuesday and said, "Hey, I I just binge watched the two episodes." He's like, "I think it's great." Smart, we're thinking about you. Yeah, shout out. There's a bunch from me. I know. John Abbott, Josh Brown, Alex Gaslam. Xavier, props on being a fucking Jake stud Naylor. firefighter, dude. I see you out there. Yeah. Twin. What I'm saying is, dude, there's there's plenty of content. You know, the the all I these I want to bring these guys up here, dude. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. We we I want to get these dudes I, you know. We film in my house and there's a spare bedroom, there's somewhere for you to stay. I'll feed Tell you. Tell a story. But I want Let's I put the shit out there, guys. Like I like you said, dude. When we when we cut this film, we dap up and then I like I already feel I feel flushed with like ah like I got something out there. I got something off my chest and so something I wanted to bring up. Um, I actually had a conversation with him last night. Um, do you remember Travis? Travis Smith, the one in the old <laughs> recruit Smith, recruit Smith. How could I forget Travis? So dude? when we and Mike Never. went to boot camp, boot camp was the first stop in the Marine Corps. We were on the same side of. So in Marine Corps, it's just basically racks in a big room. And, and when he says racks, he means bunk beds, beds. beds. And there's a. It's in a big warehouse room, and there's basically a big hallway down the middle. Correct. So me and Mike, since we're last name starts with A, we were very close to each other. Um, always. Yeah. And um across from uh, directly across from us was Travis Smith. <laughs> Recruit Smith, dude. So Travis is from Georgia, Macon, Georgia. God bless him, man. Great dude. Not not 
not even to get that. I, they need to know who Travis is first. Like Travis is a very individual person, uh, unique. When yeah. I say that, Travis is going to do Travis. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen someone be so defiant to such a tough individual being Chambers. <sighs> Yeah. Travis, props, bro. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know what, dude? the the biggest The biggest thing I took out of Travis in in, in PI was uh, Chambers would always count down. Like we we used to play this Do you game. Remember him mimicking him, like mocking him, <laughs> dude. I remember when when we were playing two sheets in a blanket. Two sheets in a blanket, dude. I wish they knew what that was. Two sheets in a blanket. Let's talk about two sheets in a blanket, real quick. Travis knows. Talk about what, fuck around games, dude. T- yeah, talk about what did I just sign up for? It's basically like frat guys on steroids, dude. That's really what it is. Like the absolute hazing to the worst degree. Yeah, and these, you know, these dudes like they just came back from Fallujah, <laughs> and, they're, and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go be di. Definitely just get kind of half cocked. And they're like, yo, let's come up with some shit. <laughs> fuck with these guys. Yeah. So we used to play this game, two sheets in a blanket. It's not a game, first of all, dude. It's just demoralizing. It's bro. not. Yeah, it's actually not a game. It was. It was a. It's, it's more, actually not a game. It's actually. It's actually, it's, it's actually pretty serious. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it gets pretty intense. So you'd be in the squad bay, and they'd tell you, "You've got, you know, you've got fucking ten seconds, sixty clean seconds. Clean that motherfucking bed, make it, and fucking get back online." Yep. And the, the, you know, Chambers would always count down, and I swear to God, he's the fastest counter I've ever met in my entire life. He would 16, put fifteen. He would put auctioneers to shame. Oh my God! He would be counting down. He'd be like 30, 29, 20, 22, 21, 19, 15, 32, 3, 2, 1, done. So I remember Smith. We were playing. <laughs> we we were doing two sheets in a blanket one after one one fine, yeah, afternoon, one fine afternoon. Fine afternoon in Paris Island. <laughs> For about three hours, we've been doing two sheets in a blanket. <laughs> so in between, when he he would he would count down to he wants you to rip all the shit off the bed and get back online, and there'd be a countdown for that, and then he'd give you X amount of seconds to go remake the bed, <laughs> which was pretty much like, why don't you turn around, fuck yourself, and get back and online? Go ahead, do it again. <laughs> yeah, for the next three hours. Yeah. So Cock sucker. And some dudes would be taking it serious, like, guys, you gotta speed up. Oh my god, you remember those dudes? They'd be like, dude, Hi guys! You, you gotta you gotta fold those angles harder. Let's go! Like Teamwork! Like, dude, chow's not for another three hours, bro. You might as well get your two sheet in a blanket game on quick. Shut up, shut up, Flanagan. <laughs> oh, Finnegan or whatever. You remember that motherfucker, dude? Fucking yeah. Dumbass fuck. motherfucker. Yeah. You remember Conk? <laughs> Oh, dude, I love Conklin. Conklin just made a run for the fucking jail. Hall. Dude, I haven't, yo, know, I haven't, I haven't seen Conklin since Paris Island. I, I would crack a beer with that motherfucker today if we found him. Basically, the one. Fact. I don't remember. I don't <laughs> remember the fights yeah. that we get into. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Paisley would just be in the corner pissing himself every morning. Yeah. I got, but I gotta go, sir. <laughs> Oh my god. But anyways, Travis. Some of the funniest moments of my life. Yes. Yeah, for real. Some some shit that like <laughs> you're just exposed to a different level of the world. When you go to PI, when you go to Paris Island, it's dudes from all over the US. And just a bunch of assholes too. Just, just the worst like, type of dudes, dude. Like, yeah, dudes that had nothing going on. Yeah. Pricks always. Yeah. Pissed off. Yeah. yeah. My buddies. Seriously, dude. <laughs> you choose to join the Marines, dude, you got nothing going for you, bro. That's like the last, like, oh, all right, I'll make an attempt at it. Well, I guess the community college isn't working out, so uh, I always wanted to fire a gun. Oh, my God. But, dude, to, to Smith. So we were playing, we, or the, the DI's chambers is yelling about two sheets and a blanket. <laughs> We've been doing this for a couple hours yeah. at this point. And now Smith has figured out that... You don't have to make the bed look that good. You just yeah. have to do it really fucking fast. Yep. Yep. So he did it as fast as humanly possible and would be back online. And Chambers would skip numbers. 29, 20, <laughs> 29, 28, 27, 10, 19, 14, 3, 2, 1. It, that's how it went. And I remember Smith going, Sir! Recruit Smith! Request! Permission to... Sp- what is it, Smith? <laughs> 
Dude, no one can under- Sir, can appreciate this. You skipped numbers. 25, 24, 23, 17. Si- Shut the fuck up, not, man. Not to do to do that, too. Oh, and they fucked with him all day after that, but I had so much respect for the fact that he was like... I've, just give it I, back to him a little bit. I've figured out that this is just a mental game. He really doesn't care how no. fat how, or what my Regardless bed looks gonna like. Regardless, going to get fucked up, dude. Like, just yeah. accept it. Right. Dude, dude it he, he had settled with it yeah. and said, you know what? You're I'm going to slay me. I'm going to make it funny. Yeah. And I respect the fuck bro, out of that about thank Travis. Thank you, bro. Dude. Entertainment at its finest, dude. Yeah. So the first time I met Matt Smith, do you remember the wine? Oh, my God. Back me. Yeah, the dude who got tuned up. <laughs> Him and Smith are going at it like marching, dude, right? Oh, I, I remember. One, I, I think Smith like fucked up marching and LeWine was like, nice job, fucking asshole, cocksucker. You're dumb. <laughs> and you don't, dude, you say that to Smith, he's going to have something to say to you. Okay, I got you, LeWine. I got you. Dude, he just looked at him and was like, you fucking for real? <laughs> and I remember it escalated to LeWine kicking him in the back. And he's like, Travis was like, you fucking for real? Like, this dude really fucking like, right, for All right. I remember, dude, right. We had just done the, this is my rifle, this is my gun. <laughs> we got done two sheets and a blanket, so finally we were laying down. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, I hear a... Travis, he's like, yo, Cardi, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Travis? <laughs> what's Nobody up? We get up at night, dude, so if someone's... Dude, oh, yeah, that's a ballsy motherfucker. He's like, yo, just go with this. <laughs> I was like, well, he's like, yeah. He's like, all right. I was like, all right. I literally... He climbs up the little rack thing, grabs LeWine by the throat. I hear a, uh, just on, just fist hitting flesh square on, dude. Like, just fucking two-piece them in the, I heard a, ah, oh, what the fuck? Uh. And then Travis, back in his rack. <laughs> Everyone's like in bed, like, what the fuck just happened? Dude. Dude, and we're all like, he's the DI is coming out now. He don't. Oh. You're, you're just waiting for the light to flip on in the hut, and then it flip. <laughs> dude, for real, you're just waiting for that fucking Wasn't light. Was that the worst feeling, dude? Like we just got to bed, dude. <laughs> it's like, Travis, it, it, me, it, we need to. Obviously, we're gonna tune this fucking kid up. Oh but can you wait till we've got a couple hours of sleep in us? I am thankful that I was part of uh, a group that did that. Yeah, me too. That man. there was some kind of justice. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you learned that last Like, night. if you're real, if you're about it, we can handle this. Right. I appreciate being from that era because I feel like that is a lost thing. I feel like keyboards and screens have came in between that. I mean, you've, you've shown it to me. In the, I hate to be the one that watches comments and comments on them, but some of the things that you've said just show how comfortable you are behind a computer screen. We're from the era of you don't talk shit. You, you talk shit. You talk shit in person. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and You've got to be ballsy enough to talk shit in person. Dude. Right. And I don't think, you know, I don't, I honestly, I don't think in our comments, I don't think I've had anything that was that serious that, you know, people, people 99% of the shit that people write to us is, is phenomenal. I'm telling you. And I love hearing it. Dude, and, and, and it's like, dude, like, really? Like you see us out here, like nah, stealing, don't our, stealing our hearts out, dude. Like you gotta, yeah. You, no, you don't please everyone, you know, man. I try not to sweat it. Travis Smith. <laughs> so what I was getting to with him, you gotta kind of know the type of person he is. Travis Smith has stayed. So for some reason, me and Mike did the buddy program. So we went to, to a lot of the places together because we signed up for that program. Yeah. For some reason, everywhere I went. Travis Smith was. He was a constant in my life. I have got to say I am thankful for that. I I believe over time Travis found out of the type of the like the type of guy I was and he fucked with me. I fucked with him. And he has stayed in my life. He hits me up probably once or twice a week to just hear how our podcast is going. Yeah. I I, I can tell you I, I would not have been able to do this without without Smith. Um, he always, he's a very ambitious person and he always gets that hustle first. He's down on it. He's tried it already. He knows like, he knows a couple people we can talk to. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. He's got the plug. Always. And I, I got to say, Travis, thank you. 
You've been a real one in my life. Uh, I've never had to worry about you. You've always had my back. And you've been a supporter since we started this podcast. Thank you, Travis. Facts. You're real. Preach. One. I'm happy that Mike knows you as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mike is my best friend, dude. I, for him to be able to share that knowledge with me, dude, that means the world. Yeah. Someone else to acknowledge that. You know what I mean? He's a good dude. <clears throat> He's a good dude. Another thing to prove that guys that you meet in the core, truly, the ones that you've like, Winton, Xavier, Travis, Cervantes, Donnerstag, you all know who you are. <clears throat> they mean so much more to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different level, dude. You know, once you especially if if you've been in those situations where where you either you've lost somebody or you've been if you've cheated deaths with somebody, like that's a that's a relationship that that never goes away. We have a unique personality. Not everyone likes us. No, most regardless of the people that you do mesh with, that's why they they mean so much. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It to that aspect, absolutely. To to. To be able to like, like nothing else matters. It's funny, man. I, I I say this. I say this to people a lot. Like, you know, the 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 media tries to portray us as such divided. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, that was the BS. Bud Lights. That was hey, free shout out. Next time, Bud Lights gonna have to sponsor for that. Dude, imagine that. Yeah, I I would I fuck with Bud Light. Oh my god, dude. We'll but I hate, yeah, I hate how the media tries to de- to depict us as Americans, as like as as a as a country, as such a divided. Well, they bring thing. up these topics to divide us. Well, yeah, and I know that. Though, like, the, there's a lot of people that don't know that, but the, it's like the Flanagans that, like, come on, guys, we'll yeah, try hard. Yeah. Like, can you not see the big picture here? Guys? Right, like, right. <clears throat> you know, we get we get further. We work together, but it's it's so hard to convince the masses of that. Yeah, the 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 fact that like for us stuff like. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't care what your what your race is. I don't I don't care what your religion is. I don't I don't care what your am- this fucking trench right now. Right. You know yeah. I mean? No shit, dude. Are you swinging the shovel? Because yeah, I am on. too. All right. <laughs> like that, that. You know. And if those guys, the guys that that, that are willing to, to to drop rounds for your country, big facts. If we don't care about any of that stuff, there's no reason why anyone in this country should. I like that right there. Th- there really isn't, dude. You know, there's there's no division. People it, need to listen to that. Like, there there is no division there. You know, for We're all us here in the shit, bro. <laughs> for like, if and you want to talk about the real ones, like the real Americans, the guys who went there and fought, they don't give a fuck. They don't care. They don't. It's not something. Do, we talk do you about. wear you wear the same camis as me? We good. Big facts. We're all green here. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the it, it just blows my mind that like normal civilians think that that America is so defied like divided. Really not, dude. But when, when there's rounds going down, range, exactly, we're all dude. suffering together. Yes, bro. when when shit hits the fan, no one cares what color your skin is. Yep. No one cares what what who you sleep with. When shit hits the fan, you're. I'm getting your back. You're getting my back. Yeah, you're an American. I got your back, dude. That's what it stops at. And, and, you know, a lot of people need to hear that and fucking act accordingly. Yeah, man. Embrace that. Like, we, we stand so much stronger as a nation than we do divided. That's the... It, it needs to That's be... That's a deep topic right there, dude. It's a huge topic. That... I mean, that could be an episode in itself. Like, how about the fact that, like, we, we've got... We've got just under 900 subscribers. No one knows Travis is a black guy. True. True. Yeah, I didn't say that, did I? No. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Exactly, dude. He's a brother to us, man. That Dude, you just dunked it right there. That's a good call. Nobody knew that. Because I think him as my boy, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even thinking he's fucking Right. Black, so, so, so keep... Keep thinking... Keep th- keep reading the cool... Or drinking the Kool-Aid that the media yeah, says dude, we're so divided. Kinda... Nah. A little common the, sense apply. The, the, people, the people that are going to live and die for this country, they don't care what it is. They're willing to do it together. It's a fact. So, something to easy breeze us on the way out, dude. I wanted to also talk about music in combat. To me, I was a gunner, as I keep saying. Mm-hmm. Having just that good playlist is so imperative to... You have to get into your job. You have to do it to your best of your ability. 
And over there, whatever your job was, you finding bombs, me putting rounds down range, whatever. Do it at your best ability. Right. That got me in the zone, dude. For some time over there, I went through every, meta- for some reason, Metallica really hit the spot for me over there. I don't know if it's just the way their songs sound or what, dude, but you wanted something to get you going a little bit. Yeah. yeah um, I was on the other end where I never had music. True. A lot of um, you can't we- use the headphones a lot. I, no, I'm out, I'm out walking, sweeping. There's no. See, we'd always have a speaker in the truck or some shit. Yeah, I'm. We were we were ground up. It, there was, uh, but I had I have songs that played in my head. That What'd you, you go with. I like a little bit of Tool. Tool's always a good one, dude. I like some Tool. I like uh, I like some Drowning Pool, especially in the like the time frame we were there. Drowning Pool. Let, that true. was my football playlist. The little Drowning Pool, dude. Oh yeah, let it rip. Um, but what happened to rock, dude? Think about the that. genre. Think about the think genre about in general is kind of faded. Well, dude, the kids, the kids nowadays don't want that. Were coming out when we were going through high school, like rock hits. Yeah, alternative rock more so. But but I mean, was stained still, was still stained, popular. Dude, corn, dude, dude, corn, come on, dude. The biscuit, oh, Limp biscuit, dude, come on. Yeah, I still get down to Limp the biscuit. Biscuit, dude. <laughs> Hitting the gym, I still get down to Limp biscuit. Shout out Fred Durst. Definitely. Regardless. Yeah, it's it's good. I've that, got to stop saying fucking regardless, dude. Oh, my God. That's my, like, filler for, like, anything. It's the word vomit. Yes. So many people have called me out on it. Really? Like, yeah. Say regardless again, asshole. Oh, I, I, I don't even notice. <laughs> if you watch, do you, do you actually watch our podcast after? Yeah. Because it's hard. It's yeah. hard to watch yourself. Yeah, it's, to me, it's just TV. Don't that's, def- that's definitely one of my words I use. I wonder what mine is. You'll find it. Drop in the comments. If I if I use it, you'll, a- you'll see one comment like this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you mean to say? Anyways, a lot. <laughs> well. Oh, well, you want to you want to cap up? Let's shout out the socials. Where are we at right now? So we're on we're on the YouTube Hard to Kill podcast. What's the Instagram? At- uh, the hard to kill pod with a zero instead of an O in pod. Got it. <clears throat> Make sure, yeah. And the uh, the email is the same way. It's uh, well, it's not the for the email. It's just hard to kill pod with a zero instead of an O uh, dot or at Gmail. Um, send us emails, man. Send us. Yeah, send us. Oh, oh, shout out one of them. Yeah, yeah real quick. My bad. I'm pump. That was a pump fake on the closure. Uh, we're gonna we're read. You guys. We're gonna read a listener email here. So it's uh, it's from the simulation. There's no there's no name on the top, but it says, "Quote: So glad to have seen Nick on Soft White Underbelly. This podcast is doing a lot of good. You don't even know. You guys are fucking fantastic. No other way to say it. Topics I'd like to hear you two cover." The role of contractors over there. Good one. Traumatic brain injury, impulsivity, and suicide. Impulsivity is a huge thing. Yes. That's, we'll get to that. But uh, The VA and what could be done to fix it. Well, that's a whole other episode. Yeah, no kidding. Trauma-based therapy and if it's effective or not. That, that we could talk about. She says, uh, or whoever this is, says... Uh, don't be afraid to do more than an hour. People will listen, which we did. I think this is like an hour and 20. Yeah, I hope but, so. Um, she said, drop a link to the stickers and description of the next YouTube video. Lots of people don't have Instagram, but would love to financially support your efforts. Oh, we just set up a GoFundMe. Oh, we did? Yes, we oh, did. yeah, no, we did. Yeah, yeah. So that is in the Instagram, and I believe I put it in the second comment section for the part two of the soft white underbelly the links in there he just pinned my comment today and then so we have it on the instagram yeah you can just click it on the instagram yeah go to the instagram which yeah. is hard instagram, to kill pod hard to get with the zero with a zero of, instead yeah, of an o pod. yep and then we have instagram we have a youtube we did that we have a gofundme we have email yeah 
Uh, she said, uh, thank you both for everything. Keep it up. Looking forward to the next episode. So let's try to hit one of those um, talking points. Um, Role of contractors. Overseas? Did you ever deal with them? Uh, often, yeah. So... I never really did. Every time I dealt with them, dude, they always be just in awkward, spooky p- places they shouldn't have been. And I've always been rolled up. So we have something over there called BFTs, Blue Force Trackers. Um, they're either on our person or they are in our trucks. They basically show all the units in the area, everyone crossing through the AOs. It, it's meant to avoid friendly fire uh, or just know where everyone's at. These guys would never show up on the BFTs. They'd be in unmarked. Tahoes with automatic gun turrets, which would make me feel obsolete as I'm a gunner. <laughs> like robotic gun turrets, like crazy, crazy stuff. And we rolled up on their mines a couple of times. So what I don't know if I should be talking about this, but fuck it. I saw a lot of contracting missions for mining lithium. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's also something that a lot of the comments talk about. Um, that's the main reason we were in Afghanistan. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't think I don't hear you conspiracy theorists out there because I'm not stupid. I think of everything. And what you saw is not fake. Uh, that, I'm not telling a yeah, tall tale. Yeah. You know there's, what I mean? There's no, there's no gain to it. That's um, what you saw. But keep in mind, being someone that's seen stuff firsthand, I still don't. I have no idea. No, I don't pictures. either, dude. Yeah. I really don't. But. Regardless, that's something I saw contractors doing. And not only that, there's contractors that just come out to fix things. The guys who run the G-Boss are usually contractors. Uh, you know, G-Boss is like stuff. a, uh, it looks like a, a giant blimp with a camera on it so you it's can see. your local satellite video yeah. surveillance. You can watch people during the day, at night, but you can see whatever you want. Um Catch give people. you a screen to watch in the yeah you you could like command. middle of the night that it'll sense the yeah. heat and it'll zoom in and you'll be able to see these really guys cool. digging a hole yeah. in the road and setting the bomb definitely like, a cool and then tool. covering it back up and running like if you it, yeah it was cool but those are all those are all private contractors they're not they're not marines who we'll drive the stuff but yeah that that'll cover one of them I mean the other three subjects from the the listener email will. will yeah, take we'll on the next one bro. yeah grab on the next one once again thanks for hanging with us guys absolutely thank you thank you we're uh we're very appreciative of all the support uh it means the world to us happy fourth of july happy fourth celebrate america's birthday the way we would please you know please. embrace the freedom and we go hard we go yeah yeah we do yeah but embrace it man like this you know Guys like us are why we can we can fight. Well, we can celebrate Talk freedom. That shit. Guys like us are why we can celebrate that freedom on that day. So cook your steaks, flip your burgers, flip your burgers, grill your doggies, drink your beers, crush your beers, and we'll see you next week. That we will. Semper Fi. Semper Fidelis, guys. Peace. <laughs>